All right, guys, I'm Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Uh, today we've got Brian from CTS and Anthony from Sierra Chart uh, to talk about, uh, well, Brian's going to talk about uh, the services provided by CTS and some of the unique features that CTS offers, and uh, we'll talk briefly about how that works with Sierra Chart. It's actually because of CTS that this webinar is possible. They are sponsoring it. So the first five to ten minutes are going to go to Brian. Then we're going to switch over to Anthony at Sierra Chart for the bulk of the webinar, and he's going to go into detail about automated trading and backtesting within Sierra Chart. Um, as always, the webinar is being recorded. If you guys have any questions, you can type them into the box there on the, the panel, and we'll do our best to get everyone's questions answered. The recording for the webinar will be posted sometime tomorrow. And uh, I, I hope I sound okay. I'm, I'm very under the weather right now, so I'm doing the best I can. Uh, so give me just, just a second, guys, and I'll be turning things over to Brian at CTS to get us started. And then we'll go to Anthony from there. Hang on, guys. Okay, am I good, Mike? Yeah, uh, we see the Internet Explorer window, and we can hear you just fine. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, uh, like Mike said, I'm uh, Brian Murphy from CTS, and i uh, just first like to thank everyone for taking some time in their uh, afternoon here to uh, listen to myself and Anthony. Uh, one thing I like to start off doing is a lot of people end up calling our office or emailing us asking about how CR Chart and CTS work together. And basically, Anthony has written to our API and has an application in our system. Um, and that's important to remember because if you sign up for our simulation or even if you have a live account and you're looking for the Sierra app, you must request that through your firm. And for those of you who potentially don't have an, an existing firm that want to try this, what's on my screen now is off of our website, off our customer link. And it just gives you a list of people who uh, deal with CTS right now. And I don't know of anyone on this list who also doesn't have the Sierra app um, available at their firm. So once you get signed up with the firm and they give you a CTS username and password, you just then make the one more request of having the Sierra app attached to you. Uh, and then you deal with the Anthony for that username and password, and you're good to go. Uh, but there is sometimes some confusion back and forth on that. So that list is there. And also off our main site, you will see an area here to sign up for the simulator. So again, a lot of people ask us to, to try it out. And we do automatically assign this Sierra app application to every sim user. So you don't have to make that request. But if you fill out this form, you get an email back from us with the username and password and a download. And that app will automatically be attached. And then Anthony can walk you through getting, um, getting hooked up with this stuff. Uh, but real quickly, I will just show came up with a little sheet here. Just to briefly mention some of the new things that we've done in the last couple of months and then what we have upcoming uh, in this quarter. Uh, a couple of things we've done lately is a spread matrix, uh, put some groups on our quote board, and start putting together an option board. And real briefly, all it really is is an option board. It just gives you some bid and offers and a strike price for the options. Uh, what I'll get into in a second is how we're going to take that kind of to the next level. Uh, I also have a spread matrix that was written. Uh, via request of a lot of our users. And just simply for your big spreader, you can take something like a Euro dollar market, put the spread matrix together. Um, you can see the bid and offer. You can simply right click and, and be able to trade that and it brings it up for you, uh, the outright or the spread. So it just quickly gives someone um, easy access to trade the spreads and see everything trading as the day goes. And the last one there was, oh, um, and then on our quote board, uh, many people have asked that be able to separate this out. And so I can really right click on this thing and um, create a group for my row. And I can then right click and name that group. You know, so if I want to call this AGS, I can do that. I can sign a color. Uh, it just gives your eye a little bit of distinction when if you're the kind of person that keeps a lot of quote boards up and watches the different markets, uh, it's just something that can very easily distinguish uh, different uh, products from one another. 
Uh, what we have going forward is we've had a lot of requests in the past year for options, and I showed you the basic option board we have, and it is that, just a very basic option board. See bids and offers, see quotes, be able to trade it, um, but we're really going to take it to the next level for those out there who uh, like to trade options or are thinking about trading options. It's very going to be a very comprehensive package, and I just put a few highlights up there of things we're doing. So option sheets, have all the Greeks. Uh, be able to easily put together a call spread or put spread, a calendar spread, a strangle straddle, what have you. Have it display to you, you know, the delta and the gamma for that so you can properly head yourself. Um, heat map, show you what's hot, what's going on. You can put indicators in there of, you know, these are my sheet values. I want to, you know, show me a red if it's above it or a blue if it's below it or vice versa, however you want to look at it. So as you're staring at a bunch of options, they can stand out quickly to you. Uh, obviously be able to click trade off that have an analyzer for your positions. Um, volatility is a big one. We want people to be able to go in there and change balls whenever they want to, whether it's just in the call side, the put side, or the skew in general. Uh, have many different kind of skew types in there. You can drag and drop the line um, to then affect your sheets. Um, crux volatility, display spread values, and of course I already mentioned the Greeks. Uh, so like I said, it's going to be a very comprehensive package. Most, a lot of our professional traders have asked for this. Uh, I think it's going to be something useful for the professional trader, but also for the casual retail trader to really see the information that these professionals see in terms of values on their sheets, be able to change that um, skew and be better prepared for you know limit up or limit down days in the future to be able to protect your position with options. And lastly, uh, the other big thing we have coming out early this year is an auto spreader. Uh, we're going to be able to use that in conjunction with um, our charts and trading. We'll be able to chart a spread that you create. You'll be able to create your own strategies. Um, you'll be able to chart them, and you'll be able to keep track of all that in the little analyzer that we have as you want to create things and change uh, potential uh, ratios inside of that. If you're doing a 5 to 3 knob versus a 2 to 3 knob, you'll be able to trade all that and be able to chart all that. Um, but you know, briefly, that's, that's the up-and-coming features that we have. Um, as usual, if you have any questions, you can hit our website and email our support or email me directly at Brian at CTS Futures and on there as well as our phone numbers. Um, you know, welcome the opportunity to talk to you. Um, Mike, thanks. I don't know if you want yeah, to ask Brian. any questions. There's a couple of questions. Reasons. Sure, a couple of questions. Thanks, Brian. Um, so just to clarify, because I, I see that there's maybe just a little bit of confusion. So, you know, CR chart works with a lot of different brokers and data feeds. CTS is is one of those feeds where you can, you know, get get your data and execute through. Okay. And do you have like uh I, I, I read on the forum why people think CTS is better than others. Do you have like a list of, of what what you would consider, Brian, uh reasons that people choose CTS over some other choice? Yeah, I think basically, especially in a situation where a third party is written to us, you know, our biggest thing that we probably stick our flag in is our stability. Uh, if you watch our system through the course of time, you know, I'll knock on wood here, but, you know, we rarely have, if any, downtime, uh, not to mention even just general slowness and hiccups. Uh, we run a very clean, you know, crisp and efficient system that, you know, is good for the casual user, user and good for the professional user. So, you know, we start out with professional users, and I figure if we can handle them, we can handle anybody. And that's probably right. the first thing you'll hear people say about us is just the stability of it. I, I have seen that uh, mentioned. You know, in, in recent times, there's been some other, uh, you know, popular brokerages and, and uh, data feeds that, that are provided by those brokerages that seem to have some problems every now and then with um, with, with keeping up. You know, they get they get a little bit behind maybe during news right. events or something like that. And I have seen some users mention that CTS does not have that problem. Uh, also, it's my understanding that CTS provides uh, a lot of historical data. Um, so that's definitely an advantage for any users that are doing that. Uh, I've also seen people comment that are using the bid and ask studies like maybe cumulative delta or something like that, that CTS offers very good, um, you know, reliable, accurate uh, bid and ask data. So I've heard nothing but good things about you guys. So if a user wants to use CTS, um, they just need to ask their broker for it or they can maybe email you and uh, if, if their broker is not already on the list. Is that right? Exactly. I mean, the, the best thing to do is, is use our website uh, to get a list of customers and people who use it. Uh, my information is on, on there and their sales as well. 
Okay. Um, and that, that, that's always a point of confusion because we actually don't do the initial setup. We do mostly training and support for the firm. So if an individual wants it, they have to go out to a firm and, and request it. Right. And if a firm's not on the list, I'm more than happy to have them email information. I can chase that firm up and try to get them signed up as well. Right. And I've talked to some firms. I think it's pretty easy to get, get it set up through you guys. So. It is. All right, man. I see one question here, and then we're going to turn things over to uh, Anthony at Sierra. Uh, some questions here about uh, when I'd like to know when CTS will change to the EBS data feed for UREX. Uh, yes, we are uh, actually writing that as we speak. Um, I don't have a definite date, but I know our early projections were we were trying to get it done by Feb 1. Uh, we've been working on it uh, most of December, and um, mm -hmm. if it's after Feb 1, we can certainly send out a notice, but that's kind of the date we've been targeting. Okay. All right, Brian, so if anybody has any other questions for Brian at CTS, uh, right there you can email sales at ctsfutures.com or you can hit him up on this website. All right, guys, thanks, Brian, and I'm going to turn things over to Anthony Thank you. Thank you. so yeah, so he can take care of the, uh, the bulk of the presentation here. All right, guys, hang on one second. Okay, um, hopefully the audio is good. Hello, everyone, and uh, I want to thank uh, CTS uh, for the opportunity to present uh, Sierra Chart. Um, we uh, we can hear you fine, but I'm not seeing your screen. Thing no, okay, uh, that's interesting. Let's see, I've got screen, the clean screen should be coming through. Let me see if I, I get a don't have it. it. I think that it uh, it's paused. Probably just need to re restart it. There it goes. Oh, okay. You know what? I had probably paused it last time, and I didn't realize it held that state. All right, we've got it now. So I see the main Sierra app. All right, thanks, Anthony. Right, right. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, so first thing I'd like to do is uh, describe. Um, the advantages of using uh, the CTS T4 uh, platform, the, the back-end platform with Sierra Chart. Um, the T4 system provides, uh, it's a complete tick-by-tick -tick data feed, um, and we've compared it to IQ feed, and that's, you know, considered a very good data feed, and, the ma you know, we always see a 100% match between the two. Um, for every trade that the T4 system uh, sends, they identify whether it's at the bid or the ask. So it provides us very accurate um, uh, bid volume and ask volume, which is necessary like when working with uh, these the numbers bars feature in Sierra chart or um, like the cumulative delta study. Just going to bring up our trade down window here. Um, the T4 system provides uh, on the server side uh, OCO functionality. That's order cancels order. So when one order fills, the other order will be canceled. So, for example, if I were to set up, you know, a target and a stop order, um, once one of those orders fills, the others is going to be automatically canceled on the server side, whether you have the, the connection or not. The T4 system provides complete uh, historical data from time frames uh, going from daily bars uh, to minute, one second, and tick. And of course, from minute, second, and tick, historical data, we can construct you know, various intraday time frames. So you can do you know tick charts, volume charts, range charts, Renko, anything. Uh, I believe the T4 system has 30 days of tick data, and um, the minute data I think goes back uh, to you know in the case of futures to when the futures contract began to trade. Okay, I'm seeing a question here. Does the Sierra data feed match? the IQ data feed for pro bars. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's the, 
the T4 data feed is going to be just as you know as good as uh, IQ feed. So you know it should match. Um, someone's asking a question: Whose dome is that you're using? This is the Sierra chart trading dome I have up here. Um, the T4 system, you know, in our experience, provides very reliable and fast order handling and routing. Um, and uh, also, uh, everyone at Cunningham Trading Systems has always been very uh, good to work with. Very uh, nice, good group of people there. So, so there's someone's asking: Are MIT orders server side too? Um, yes, yeah, for sure. If Sierra, you know, in the case of when a service supports. Uh, Market if touched orders, um, that's that's going to have to be uh, server side managed because Sierra Chart is not going to manage a market if touched order. If a service doesn't uh, support it, it would just simply the order is going to come back rejected. Okay, um, just very quickly, uh, we've added a a new quote board feature. You can see that right here. Um, so this uh, this quote board is a, is a completely separate window. It can be uh, uh, detached. Well, it actually floats outside the main CRHR window, and it can also be uh, by default. It's like on top of the main CRHR window, but it can also be detached, just like a chart can be. So you can even just drag it to other monitors. Um, to do, to access uh, the quote board, you just select. You go to the file menu and select new quote board. Okay. So, you know, the quote board gives you a list of uh, symbols and the current uh, quote data for them. It supports linking to a chart. So, if I go to the settings menu and, s and select set chart link, let's, this right now is set on link number four. Okay. Notice how that's red in color. Now, if I go to a chart, uh, let's just say, okay, I'm going to go to this this chart here. This chart, if you if you if you notice along the uh, top right of the chart, along the top line, you see a a box that indicates the link number. It's set to L4, so that's link number four. So when I click on a symbol in this list, I'm going to get this uh, go to webinar stuff out of the way. Um, when you click on a symbol in the list, the chart automatically changes to that symbol. I was just looking at the euro dollar here. It doesn't look like the uh, the formatting on this is correct, and I'll have to check on that after the webinar. Um, so you can configure the fields uh, you want to display. Uh, you can you know load and save a group of symbols. Okay, well the main, uh, I see a question here, it says chart trader, and yes, Sierra Chart does have chart trading capability. Um, I'm going to go to the chart that I'm going to be using to demonstrate automated trading from, I'm going to minimize this, uh, actually I'm just going to detach this quote board and then just get it out of the way. Um, Sierra chart does have full chart trading capability, and this chart here that I'm going to be using for automated trading, I've got a trade window attached to the left side, and I just clicked on the trade menu, and I'm going to select trading chart DOM on, and that gives a you know an order entry ladder type interface over on the right side for entering orders. That's one way to enter orders. You can also just right click. Um, on the chart and select, uh, like if I want to do a buy limit, I could just select buy limit. But let's say I just want to put a, um, a sell limit above the market. I just go to the right side here uh, to the sell column and then I'll just click and I get a confirmation here of the, uh, of the order. I'll click yes to submit it. Okay. So you can see uh, the um, this is the main order, the red line here, and then I've got the two child orders, the um, 
the stop and the target. So there's a question here, when is your daily service window for futures? Not totally clear uh, what the question there is. Um, JW, if you can clarify that, that would help. CTS, um, there's a question, CTS is a futures broker also. Uh, Brian at CTS will need to answer that. I guess he can come on uh, after I'm done and answer any additional questions. Okay, there's a question from Joel. How do you put the sell by column on the right? It's a good question. Um, what I did is I went to the trade menu, okay, and then I selected, it's this command, trading chart down on. Notice there's a check mark. If I uncheck it, it's gone. If I go back and check it, it comes right back. Okay, I'm just going to cancel this order, and that's going to take out the two children as well. Another question, what program are you using for the automated trading? I'm going to be using um, our spreadsheet trading study, and I'll explain that in detail. Um, do you have auto connect feature when futures are not trading? Uh, well, certainly CR chart will automatically connect to the data and trade server when it started up. That's an option, and if it loses the connection, it'll reconnect. So I th hopefully that answers the question. Um, is it possible to get the CTS trading DOM through CR charts? Well, if you have uh, you know, if you have an account with a broker that supports the CTS T4 platform, you can certainly use the T4 front end as well as the Sierra chart front end, and we also have our own trading DOM. Okay, well, I'm going to go on. Uh, if you could just hold off on the questions, I want to go on to the automated trading since there's a lot of detail with that. Um, so the easiest way to perform automated uh, trading in the Sierra chart is going to be using our spreadsheet trading study. We also have uh, our advanced custom study interface and language, or ACSIL for short which is a C++-based language that you can um, use to perform automated trading as well. Um, Sierra Chart provides a complete uh, managed and unmanaged automated trading environment. Uh, managed, when I say managed, this means that when you, let's say, send an order to buy, um, and then you, like, if you send, like, another you know, buy order immediately after that second buy order, you know, based upon default settings is just going to be automatically uh, rejected because there's already an order uh, working to enter the market or there's already a long position established. So it provides, you know, a tightly controlled environment and it's very configurable how the automated uh, trading management works, but it provides a very controlled environment to, um, to control the process of automated trading uh, so that it works in a sensible way. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to go to the analysis menu, and then I'm going to click on studies. Okay. Now on the list of studies here on the left, you would want to go down to this study here, spreadsheet system for trading. Okay and then you would just click Add. Now, I actually already added an instance of this study, um, and it's this one here. Uh, this was the date of the last webinar, December 13th. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to use that one. Um, the name has been changed. Uh, it just, you know, the, name of, the names of study in this list can be changed, and it's been changed to the name, you know, I just use a date. Um, but this is a study, you know, that you would want to work with to perform automated trading. Okay. And the next step is to add any other studies 
to the chart that you want to use in your automated trading system. Um, I just want to pro provide a simple example this time. So I just added a, a simple moving average. Okay. So I'm going to go into the settings for the simple moving average. And as you can see, it's based upon the last trade prices and the length is set to 10. Okay. Now I'm going to click this study, which is our spreadsheet system for trading study. And then I'm going to click settings. Okay, so this has a considerable uh, um, amount of inputs to it. Everything is all documented. Um, but, but a lot of these, um, these inputs, you know, control are, are related to the automated, tra automated trading management logic to control the process of automated trading. Um, for example, um, this is one here, signal only once per bar. So this only, like for every bar, you, you know, this is set to no. Um, so that means we can get more than one uh, trade signal, you know, within the same bar. Of course, there could be other reasons an order might get rejected by the automated trading logic. Uh, but this is um, set to no in this case. Um, another one here, cancel all orders on entries and reversals. This one, we're just going to leave it at no. Allow entry with working orders. Um, normally that should just be no. Signal only on bar close. This one we're going to set to yes. What this means is that we're only going to allow a signal uh, once a bar uh, is complete. So if a bar is building, during the process of when a bar is building, we're not going to you know, take any trades off of that last bar. This here is our uh, order quantity, so it's set to three. This one maximum position allowed is set to a thousand. Um, that controls, you know, the maximum position. Now it's important to read the documentation uh, for how this works because there are certain conditions, like when you're using limit orders, where your this setting could potentially get exceeded. Um, this setting, send orders to trade service, is no, which means that this automated trading system is operating in a simulated uh, mode only. We also have the ability to support reversals. So, you know, if you get a, if you're currently long the market, then there's a signal uh, to go short. It'll flatten the current position and then establish a new position in the opposite direction. And there's you know options here for order types, um, so market orders, limit, stop, stop limit. Currently, these are only controllable um, from within the input settings, but we're going to allow these to be dynamically controlled on the spreadsheet itself. That's one of the things uh, I hope to get to in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and click OK. So I already had added the spreadsheet trading study to the chart and there's a spreadsheet that was previously opened and I just clicked here on the bottom of uh, the main window on the tabs to bring it into view. So this is uh, an Excel type of spreadsheet. And you can see over here on the left all of the uh, uh, chart data. So we got the date, open, high, low, last. Um, each one of these rows is one bar of data, and the last bar is here is here on top. And this is the S and P 500 uh, E mini futures for March. We're looking at. So you can see the market's uh, active right now. So uh, you can see the number of trades counting up. I'm just going to have a quick look at the questions. Uh, what is the performance of the auto trading system you are showing? Um, if by performance, if you mean like the speed of it, spreadsheets 
uh, you know, are not quite as fast as our, uh, at least with back testing, as our um, advanced custom study interface and language. But in real time, the performance is very good. And another question is, are stop or OCO orders held server-side? The answer is yes. One question is, how do you pull the data and import to Excel? Um, in the case of automated trading, we don't support a connection to Excel. You, you just need to use a Sierra chart built-in spreadsheets. And are there instructions or webinars on Sierra chart for automated trading? Uh, yes. Absolutely, we, we do have online uh, documentation, and I just had done some updates to that t today. So, uh, as I was saying, the data here on the left, you know, beginning at column A, is the chart bar data, okay? And then these two columns, I and J, um, there's a whole mix of information here, uh, like this row here indicates the quantity of working orders. This row here indicates our current uh, position quantity, which is zero since we're flat the market. Here's our open profit loss. Um, we have our bid and ask prices here. Uh, we've got our daily high-low values here. Um, in some cases, these values actually work as, or these like cells actually work as inputs. For example, I could specify a custom order quantity here. If I want to override the quantity and in the input settings of that was set to three, I could just specify a new quantity here. This cell cancel all working orders. If I just set that to true, then all the working orders would be canceled. So you could create, you know, a formula to. Uh, Cancel the working orders based on you know a certain condition. So some of these just provide you know they they're, um, they work as inputs, and some of them they're just uh, output only. They're just read only. Like here's the symbol of the chart. Here's the last uh, bar ending uh, date time. These two show the um, the date time of the last entry and exit. This is effectively means that there isn't any trade that's been made because these are both uh, set to zero. I mean the, the 1900 one zero means that they're they're zero. Trading service account balance. Yeah, that's our account balance with T4. Apparently, we're down 902,000. <laughs> um, okay, so someone, the question about performance was in terms of win loss and percentage wins. Um, well, that that totally depends upon how what you program in. Um, I just ran a back test of this trading system. I'm going to demonstrate in it basically. Uh, doesn't perform very good. It's just a simple example. It basically has a, a small, generates a small loss. So Joel is asking, are you entering and exiting the trades by alert? Where do I put in the trade parameters? I'm going to get into that now. So um, I'm just going to quickly move over to, to, the, to column AA here. So over here, we ha all of our study data is outputted. So this column here contains our moving average values. Okay. So these columns, um, K, L, M, N, are our um, buy entry, buy exit, sell entry, and sell exit columns. And then we have additional columns, formula columns O through Z available. Now we're going to be adding an option to this study in the next couple, two to three weeks to increase the number of formula columns. It's going to, you know, right now there's I think 16 of them. I think it's like about 16. 
we're going to increase that to 40. So you can have you know a lot more formula columns available. So with this trading system, um, I'm going to define a rule for a buy entry and a sell entry. And it's basically going to be when the last trade price crosses the moving average, uh, you know, we're going to buy and sell. So if we cross the moving, you know, if the last trade price crosses the moving average from the top, then we'll sell. If the last trade price crosses the moving average from the bottom, then we'll buy. This is just a simple example, and I'm not claiming it's, it's a profitable system because it isn't. Um, so I've clicked inside of uh, this cell right here, K3. So this is where you're going to, you know, the formulas always need to be entered into uh, row 3. And then they're automatically copied down. So just to clarify, columns K through Z, okay, are the formula columns. And this is what, you know, establishes um, the buy and sell uh, logic to, you know, for automated trading. Now it's only these columns, though K through N, are where uh, the form, you know, the actual formulas for buying and selling need to go. These other columns can be just used for background calculations that you may reference in the formulas at K through N. I'm not using buy exit or sell exit because I'm just going to use um, the Sierra chart attached orders feature to automatically exit the market. So, okay, I just brought up my on-screen keyboard. So I've clicked on K3. Okay, now this is our um, our uh, buy entry formula. So when we cross from below. Um, we're going to buy. Now E3 uh, colon E5 references the last trade prices and I'll show you. I'm going to scroll over here. You notice this column here E is our last trade prices. Okay, so the first value here is, e, is in the E3 cell and with the crossover formula um, you need to give it a range of values and it's best to give it three values instead of just two values. So I'm giving it E3 to E5. And A3 to A5 is our moving average. Okay. Now I'm going to code in some additional logic here. I'm going to put an AND function. And I'm going to say that we only want to buy um, if we're currently flat the market. So that would be our position quantity, which is J5, okay, is equal to zero. Then I'm going to put a comma to separate these two. I'll need a closing parenthesis here at the end. Okay. So we're currently flat the market, and then we have. Um, you know, across from below, then we'll buy. So our sell formula is very similar. This is across from above. Uh, that's of our last trade prices as represented by E3 to E5. Crosses from a, uh, above the moving average represented by A3 to A5. Okay. So I'm also going to code into here an AND formula to make certain we are flat the market. Now, it actually, effectively, this is the case anyway with the automated trading logic. Effectively, with the way this is configured, you'd have to be flat the market before an entry would occur. But I'm just coding this in so that we don't even attempt to even send an order until we're actually uh, tells certain that we're actually flat. I just realized that I should probably use an absolute reference on these because notice how, okay, so I'm referencing J5, which is the position quantity, but because these formulas automatically get copied down, that J5 here, 
I'm just going to make that more clear, became a J6. So I'm going to go edit that and put, for those of you who are familiar with Excel type formulas and references, you'll know what I'm doing. I'm putting a dollar sign in front of um, the reference in front of the J and then in front of the 5 to make it absolute. So when it gets copied down, it's not going to change. And once you start experimenting with these worksheets, all of this is going to become a lot clearer in case it's not very clear right now. So there, it's a very you know, fun, interactive way to do automated trading. Uh, there's a question here. What does uh, it cost to buy or rent the chart trader program? Yeah, that's a good question about pricing. Sierra Chart has pricing ranging from 20 to $45 a month. Uh, that's before discount. Um, for automated trading, you would want to choose our package three, which is 27 a month. And with you know, if you pay, pay like for a whole year, I think that price drops down to about $22 a month. Um, another question is, one, does one have programming access to the different levels in the DOM? Yes, absolutely. Not on spreadsheets, though, but on in our Advanced Custom Study Interface and Language, or ACSIL, uh, you have access. Another question, is this better than NinjaTrader? Seems the same. Um, I, I haven't used NinjaTrader, so I, I can't say. Uh, obviously, I'd be biased, and I, I would say we're certainly better. So you'll have to make your own decision on that. Um, why three values? Um, so you're referring to the crossover formula. Why do we use three values? Um, I'd have to look at the actual code programming on this, but the re in general, the reason, without getting into a lot of exact details, and I'd have to look at the code to know the exact details, but in general, um, when you have, in, in the case where two lines are actually, you know, they come very close to each other but don't cross and the values are equal, we need to go back like, go back like another column in the chart you know, to determine if a crossover actually occurred. Or, or to, it's not really to determine if a crossover occurred, but to actually determine whether, clearly whether a crossover occurred at, at the two bars being examined. I can tell that Norma didn't maybe quite understand the question, the answer about the um, Y3 values, and I don't think I answered that clearly. I really would actually have to uh, look at our, our code on that to see the exact reason why, but it's, it's basically to ensure that the crossover is, is accurate. And yes, Rob, Robert is asking, can one use custom indicators? Absolutely. You can, you can use any, any uh, uh, indicator you want for automated trading. Someone's is asking that I scroll down column I to see all the data, and I will do that. So uh, I'll just highlight I and J. So this is the top. Okay, then I'll just uh, scroll down part way and stop. So we've got various trade statistics here, um, like maximum open position profit and loss, winning trades, losing trades, total trades. Okay, I'm going to go down some more. More trade statistics here, daily winning trades. Well, these are like daily statistics for like the trading day. Winning daily, winning trades, daily losing trades. Currency value per tick, so for every tick on the ES, that's worth 12 and a half US dollars. This one indicates whether you're connected to the data feed. These ones all indicate um, indicate the state of various inputs. They actually say read only. I think what I'm going to do is um, 
for every one of these cells that is read only, like for example, most of these like right here are read only. I think we'll put the word read only after them so it's quite clear. Um, so someone's asking, is there a way to get a copy of this Excel spreadsheet? Um, well, you're pretty much going to see this once you just add the spreadsheet study to the chart. And um, I think we'll go ahead and in the next couple of days, uh, we'll put together, um, we'll go ahead and save this file and, along with the study collection and make it available for, for downloading on, our, uh, on the documentation page that explains the spreadsheet study. Yes, you absolutely. So the question is: So if I understand the buy and sell condition capabilities, it's possible. It is possible to set up multiple conditions to trigger a buy or sell order. Yes, ab absolutely. Um, so anyway, I'm just reading through the questions. Is there a way to use conditions from two different charts, a one minute and a five minute, or a one minute and a range bar? Yes, absolutely. So what you would do is I'll just go back to this chart here that I'm using for automated trading. Um, what I would do is just go to the analysis menu, studies, and I, you would just simply add this study here, study slash price overlay. You would add that and using this input here, you would choose uh, the chart that you want to access study data from or just whether it's a study or the main price graph, um, and then you select, you know, either the main price graph or whatever, and it'll just um, it's just going to get overlaid on top of here, and then it gets outputted to the spreadsheet. So I just overlaid um, the five-minute uh, ES futures. So I'm this automated trading system is on a ten-minute chart now. I, I have overlaid the five-minute data. So if you go over here on the spreadsheet, you know, here at column AC, you can see all of the um, the five-minute data being outputted. It wouldn't actually be all of it because for every 10-minute bar, there's two five-minute bars. So it's like every other bar is outputted. So, and there's various, uh, you know, options for controlling the uh, the um, like the matching mode um, to determine whether you're using like the first or last you know five minute bar that matches up with the ten minute bar. Another question is if you're interested in trading a basket of symbols, could each symbol be triggered by their own buy and sell conditions? Yes, you would need to set up a chart for each and then you know each symbol and apply an automated trading system and they can certainly all be running at the same time um, So another question about overlaying bars from different time frames is a volume chart and a time chart won't have bars that conform. Can they still be used? Yes. You know, there's, and still there's different methods of matching up uh, the times uh, when overlaying bars from the source chart to the destination chart. Another question is if I would like to trade the CL, this is the oil market 
what does it take to get it going from the start? Um, well, I'm not certain what's meant by get it going from the start. Maybe you mean like um, certainly, you know, once you set up an automated trading system, it's just going to immediately start to function on the live data. Um, you can enable and disable. Oh, fresh, new to the system. Do you mean? Do you mean like just like building up a automated trading system? It would be just similar to what I've just done now. Like if you want to use a spreadsheet, you just open up a chart for the CLG3 market, add the spreadsheet study to the chart, spreadsheet system for trading study, and then you add all your other studies you want to use, if any, and then just write the formulas. Someone's asking, would you, can you use an if function to obtain a five-minute bar data, which equals a 10-minute bar data? Well, you'd want to make certain that both the five, you know, that the five-minute bar data is on the chart and the 10-minute, you know, let's say it's a 10-minute chart, and then you'd also want to make certain the five-minute data is there, and then you can reference that in the formulas. That, that's, that's the way to do it. Okay, I see. So they're saying like if the five minute and ten minute bar cross the moving average from above. Um, yeah, that, that that should be possible. I mean that that is possible. I, I'm not totally clear on the absolute specifics, but because you know I would assume the five minute has its own moving average, so you'd want to overlay that moving average probably want to overlay both of them actually, both the five minute bars and its moving average, and then you can check for a crossover. So another one is, can the conditions used to trigger a buy and sell order consist of indicator conditions that are using different time frames? Yes, yes, absolutely. So another one is, I have found that auto trade spreadsheets more than 200 rows long really slow my computer. Um, is that when performing like a back test or, or just in real time? It would be surprising in real time if you would notice that. Even though maybe you're only using, um, okay, one thing to look at, Norma, is even though you've, you're using 200 rows, um, scroll down past row 200 and see if there's additional data. Um, if there is, highlight it all and delete it because maybe that excess data is going to slow it down. That That's very likely to make a big difference. 200 rows shouldn't be slow at all in real time. Also, it's our longer term plan and that this is expected to be completed this year. It, these spreadsheets are based upon like the Microsoft.NET framework, which is not really that efficient. And we're right now in the process of developing our own spreadsheet functionality. That's a big task, and you know what we're going to develop is going to be very fast um, and high performance. Yeah, if you're so, if you deleted all of that, you know anything beyond row 200, and you're and it's still slow. I am. I don't know. That's that's um, that's not something that I've normally seen in, in real time. You know, it, it's slowing down a computer, especially if it's just one spreadsheet. Okay, so Norma's saying 200 is okay. All right. Um, So Joel is asking, where do I get the spreadsheet SCWBF like you have? Um, Joel, what you want to do is just go to a chart in the Sierra chart, okay? Go to analysis, go to studies on the menu, 
OK. And then in the list of studies available, uh, scroll down to spreadsheet. We've got three spreadsheet studies. We have one that's called spreadsheet study. That's just for creating your own custom uh, studies and indicators. We have the one, the one I'm using now, spreadsheet system for trading. That's for automated trading. And this one spreadsheet system alert, that's for just like setting up like alert, um, simple alert and trading, uh, you know, uh, trading system uh, formulas uh, just to give you like signals on the chart and alert messages, but not, not for automated trading. So someone's asking, are there ACSIL functions for communicating between an ACSIL study to data from an Excel sheet? Well, if you're referring to the CRHR built-in spreadsheets, um, certainly if you put like an ACSIL study, like if you put your own custom study on the chart, it's going to be outputted to the spreadsheet, so that is a way you could do communication. And it's also possible to access the results, like the formula columns, like K through Z, um, from an ACSIL study uh, that's on a chart that also has a spreadsheet study on it. You would just simply call the get study array from chart, or get study array using ID function. Um, one question is, can you point me to some examples for creating studies indicators in Sierra chart beyond that in the online manual? We have, if you go to the folder, uh, if you have Sierra chart installed on your computer, if you go to the folder, in that folder, it's called ACS source. Uh, we have a lot of uh, code examples in there. These are not spreadsheet examples, but using our uh, ACSIL. Uh, interface, uh, interface and language. Um, so Joel's asking like uh, about chart trade, um, the chart, Joel's asking about like trade trading chart DOM on, he can't get it, and he's using um, a white labeled version of Sierra chart. Joel, it, it, that, that feature is just restricted in your version. You, you need to just have a direct uh, account with us to access that feature. Okay, well anyway, I'm going to uh, drag the questions out of the way and going to finally now demonstrate, um, so I, you know, to, demonstrate the performance of this uh, trading system I put together here. It's a very simple one. Okay, we've got a simple buy entry formula. Uh, last trade price is crossing a moving average. Uh, simple sell entry formula. So I'm going to go back to the chart. After I've modified the formulas on the chart, um, or I'm sorry, mo after modifying the formulas on a spreadsheet, you should go to the chart menu and select recalculate to fully recalculate the chart. Um, so you can see visually here, um, you know, these little arrows, these indicate where, you know, the buy and sell signals, okay. The blue line, of course, is our moving average, but, you know, these little uh, yellow and uh, Violet arrows are, are our buy and sell signals from the uh, uh, the trading worksheet. So now the next step is to actually back test this. Um, now I had said we're going to use the attached orders feature in Sierra Chart to uh, you know to exit the market. So we'll set up a um, you know when we enter the market you know we'll use you know a target and a stop order as an exit. Um, so I just clicked over here on the left, you can see a trade window attached to the chart. 
I clicked on the Targets tab, and I've got Target 1 uh, is a limit order with a 10 tick offset. So on the ES, that's um, 2.5 points. And then we've got Stop, a stop order. It's also 10 ticks. I'll just make that take that down to eight eight ticks. Okay. So to ensure that these are targets, you know, or this target and stop is going to be used, I'm going to click on the main tab and make sure there's a check mark by use attached orders. Okay. So now the next step is to actually back test this. So I'm going to go to the trade menu and select auto trade system bar based back test. So we've got two kinds of uh, methods of backtesting. Bar-based backtesting is a faster but a little less accurate, and it's going to test the trading system against the actual bars in the chart. So we're going to the trading system is going to be run you know run against like the open high close values of the bar. Um, there's also replay-based backtesting where we actually would replay through the underlying data we have. And in this case, uh, I have set up in the connection settings for T4, I set it to use the one-second data from the T4 system. So that would be uh, testing the trading system against every one second of data. So that's a lot more precise. That's going to you know, simulate, um, be pretty close to simulating live market conditions. But I'm going to go ahead and just perform a bar-based back test. So I'm going to click that. And I got a message log telling me that we need to disconnect from the data feed, so I will do that. OK, so I've disconnected. Go to the trade menu, perform a bar-based back test. Um, it's asking me for the bar processing increment. Um, this means that. This determines how many bars are going to be processed at once before we stop and allow user interface uh, processing to be done. So a 250 is fine. So we're 20% done with the back test. Okay, the back test is done. Um, you'll notice these little uh, boxes. Um, the colors are probably not the best on some of them, but these indicate, you know, our actual buys and sells. Um, so, like right here, well, if you can see where I'm pointing, but like right here, for example, we sold three contracts at fourteen fifty three twenty five, and if you look on this bar. You bring up the chart values tool. So like this box here, this indicated a cell, and you can see a little little arrow right here, you know, the actual price level where the cell occurred. Um, so these boxes and the small, uh, these small little corresponding arrows directly on the bars indicate the actual buys and sells. Um, So our next uh, buy was right here on this bar, and this is the box for it, and there's this little arrow. Now, you also see you know, these yellow arrows and these other uh, like violet colored arrows. These, these arrows are from the actual formula results indicating where where we're saying, where the trading system is saying to buy or sell, but um, those are not necessarily always going to be followed because there could be reasons, you know, why the uh, you know a trade is not you know, not taken. It, you know, there could, the automated trading logic and CR chart is going to filter out trades based on certain conditions. And whenever that you know a trade gets filtered, that's going to show up in uh, uh, the trade service log, which I'm going to bring up. 
Let me actually check the timing of this. So 1512. And these, these occurred earlier. I'm just kind of looking at these buy sell arrows now, just kind of thinking why we're still seeing, why we see some of these, but we don't see any corresponding trades because right here, we, um, like we entered the market right here, had a position, but um, because with the formula should be ignoring. Oh, I think I know why. Because we had to code it into the formulas whether, you know, if there's a position not to buy, you know, indicate a buy or sell, but because of that state, that state is constantly changing though. So I guess we could still see arrows historically, you know, historically. Um, anyway, uh, so anyway, these, these, um, these boxes and the you know, small corresponding arrows in the bar indicate the actual buy sells. So, sorry for that delay. Um, I'm going to go to the trade menu and then I'm going to go to trade activity log now to actually see the results of our back test. So I'm going to click um, trade activity. Um, let's see, so this is set to all activity that here we set the source um, for order activity. We would want to select replay back test. And in here, we need to choose our symbol. I certainly want to get a blank symbol here, but um, so we would, you know, we're, we're doing sim trading on the ES market, so that's going to be this symbol right here. Um, and then we want to set our starting date. Um, this really can be, in this case, it probably should. We just want to make certain it's at least a month back in time. And then we can go to the trade statistics tab. Oh, I don't have this set right. I got to set that to uh, replay back test. Um, so I'm going to make this maximize this window. So here's our trade statistics tab showing the performance of this trading system. So as I, you know, was saying, this is not necessarily a good system. We took um, total number of trades was 176 trades, trading three lots in the ES. So our profit was 50,000, loss was 71,000, and total profit loss, you know, this was obviously a loss of 21,000. Oh, this is 21,000 points actually. It seems hard to believe we lost that much. I guess on three lots it might, it might add up. As a currency value comes out to $105,000 loss, okay. <laughs> That's not the best example. And that's across 30 days of data on a 10 minute chart. Anyway, I'm just demonstrating the functionality, not necessarily trying to demonstrate a profitable system. Um, but we've got, you know, a whole a whole long list of statistics here, uh, you know, showing you the performance of the trading system that you can look at. So this, this window, the trade activity log, is a central um, place where all of the order activity from simulated and live trading is held. And then you can, by using the controls at the top, and, by among, and then you can control, you know, what, you know, orders or fills, orders and fills you want to display data for. And then you have various uh, tabs. You've got the trade activity tab, which is, in this case, is just showing all of the individual fills uh, that were actually taken.
yeah, this trading system is not good because it's just, uh, I can see a lot of cases just we're getting stopped out, see a lot of stop orders getting hit. Um, Let me just try something. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me just make this 14 ticks. I'm going to run this again. I'm going to make the stop a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm going to go to run this test again. Okay, so that's been run again, and then I'm going to go back to the trade activity log. So I'll go to trade, trade activity log. Um, yeah, so just by making that stop bigger, whether that was smart or not, um, now we basically have a profit of uh, $712. Looks like it took less trades. Interesting. So, you know, so anyway, you can... Um, yeah, I think that stop was just simply too tight. Um, you know, as you can see, there's just so many variables that goes into automated trading, so there's endless possibilities on how to configure an automated trading system in order to come up with something that's profitable. But this tab here, so using the controls at the top of this window, you can control what order and fill activity you want to display here on the trade activity tab. Okay, so I've chosen all activity, uh, replay, back test, order activity. You know, that's the source of order activity. I've chosen this particular symbol. Uh, I've chosen a starting date, and then today just means uh, you know up till today. If you make changes in this box here, click apply. So this then controls what what's displayed on the trade activity tab and then you have the remaining tabs trade statistics trades and period trade stats which then generate reporting based upon the order fills and trade activity so to look at the performance of an automated trading system you know the trade statistics is going to be the most important one to look at so um, you know, this here we have the percent profitable, 60% profitable. We did 118 trades. You can see your maximum run up, maximum drawdown. And these these values here are as a currency value, not as points. And then this tab, trades tab, actually matches up, you know, two fills you know, both like a buy and sell fill in order to create a trade. So this shows shows you all of your trades and a running uh, total of the cumulative profit loss. It's interesting. So it seems like we got, as I'm looking through this list, we got up, seems like we peaked right around here. And then started going down from there. So there's a lot of detail here, you know, to look at. Entry efficiency, exit efficiency. You could even program in a commission. And once we factor in commissions, the system's not going to be profitable. So you'd enter the commission here. We've also added uh, the, the capability to specify commissions you know, for each individual symbol in Sierra chart, that's going to come out in a few days. We've got period trade stats here, which I'm not that familiar with, but um, um, like if I select daily, this would then give us uh, the trade statistics, like for every day. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the questions. I'm sure there's some. So
so one question is um, how far back can you go for back test data? You can go uh, as far back as you want. I was testing across 30 days of data. Um, from JW, they're saying you should limit the maximum loss to X dollar per contract. Okay. Right. Try a five tick stop. I could try one. Five tick stop. Okay. Let's make that five ticks. I think that's going to be a bit tight, but we'll try that. Is there a way to ask it to optimize stop for a given target? Um, well, the stops and targets are just fixed values. Um, you can make these, uh, you know, if you use the, in the on the spreadsheet, um, you can certainly specify your own buy exit and sell exit rules, which are dynamic. So you can, you know, dynamically you know, alter the, uh, um, you know, you can just exit the market whenever, whenever you want you know, based on whatever your rules are. So that's essentially a way to dynamically alter the target and stop value. But right now I'm just using fixed values for those. Another question is, can you, can you use, say, a 100, 133 tick chart? Absolutely. Okay, so let's see, it looks like our trading system completed. Uh, on that five tick stop, the loss now is $19,000. I think when I was get reading off the value before, I, I think I misquoted it. Um, so, Anyway, I'm happy to take questions or, um, you know, if there's, you know, okay, Robert is asking, does it have an optimizer option? Uh, no, we, we don't support optimization. All right, guys, if anybody has any other questions for Anthony, go ahead and ask them now. Otherwise, we're going to start to wrap things up here. Uh, another question, does the entry and exit logic execute from the user's computer or from the server? Um, the, it's, it's all on the user's computer. Um, but in the case of an entry, once an order is sent, um, that's going to be working at the exchange. Um, I was using market orders in this case, so those are going to fill immediately. Now, in the case of an exit, if you're using on the spreadsheet buy exit and sell exit, that's going to be, um, this is all managed from your computer and it's not until those go to true will there be an order sent at that time. In the case of the, I, I was using um, the attached orders feature to exit the market. Now these are actual orders sent to the exchange and the OCO functionality is managed by the T4 system. So it's a lot more secure way of doing it, but it's less flexible. Um, next question is if you have an automated, tr an automated order in, can you manually cancel it? Yes. Um, so on the spreadsheet, what you'd want to do is You'd want to set this set. Well, you can always just manually cancel it. Uh, you know, you'll see it on the chart, the order, and you can always just can't. You know, click the X button to cancel it. You can always, you know, click this button 
on the trade window cancel all. But if you want to do it programmatically based upon some logic, you would use um, this cell here, J27, cancel working orders. Next question, is the spreadsheet function basic to the Sierra chart? Um, I'm not certain I fully understand that, but um, so the next question. So the arrows magenta and yellow are, are not associated with the study. Well, those ones are actually um, the magenta and yellow. Those represent the state of the formulas. Uh, those represent the state of the, you know, the false and true values that you see in K and M. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's where an order was actually sent. Um, like I was actually, one thing I was just looking at here is, is, you know, why did I see all these arrows here when, when we bought the market here, so we're in the market, we have not exited yet, and so, you know, being that the formulas check to see if there's a position, but the thing is, is they're checking to see if there's a position, if there's a current position. They're not really aware of whether there was a position historically. So, um, so currently we don't actually have a, yeah, currently we don't actually have a position, so therefore they're working off current data, so that's why they're showing up. Um, so, sorry I missed the beginning of the session. What is the T4 system as compared to the Sierra chart system? I'm not sure I fully understand that. Um, so the T4 system is, uh, that's the name of like the Cunningham trading systems. Uh, you know, their, their whole, you know, back-end infrastructure, you know, trading and market data infrastructure, which gives you connectivity to the exchanges and provides the market data, and they also have a, a, a front end called T4. Um, and Sierra Chart is a complete trading, uh, charting and trading program that runs on, on, a, on your computer. It's a downloadable program you run on your computer that connects to the T4 back end in Chicago. And that's how, we, you know, you can, that using the T4 system, that's how you can submit orders to, you know, to the marketplace and get market data. So the question is CTOR, CTS like a broker. They work with, they, 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 they're a technology provider and they work with a lot of brokers who use their tech, trading technology. Uh, Tom's asking, allow entry with working orders is set to no. And neither the stop nor target was hit. This is why you have arrows, no entries. Allow entry with working orders. Yeah, that, that's certainly one reason, Tom. But also, uh, I've got coded into these formulas, though. You know, I've got like J5 equals zero. So there has to be no position before we enter the market. So there's, it's, those, it's both of those things, actually. And the reason, the reason, Tom, I did it, I put this, the J5 check in here is because I don't even want to even send an order if there's a, a position already. So the, the trade service log uh, doesn't fill up with a bunch of messages, you know, indicating rejected orders. Um, how does one locate someone to help put in formulas for complex plans. Well, I can't make any promises, but if you make a posting on the Sierra Chart Support Board, it's possible um, one or more of our users may, may be able to offer some assistance. Another question is, can we use any broker with the spreadsheets? Yes, you, you can. 
Is there a list of futures and futures options brokers who can be used with CTS Sierra charts? Um, yes, I saw that earlier. Um, there's a lot, many of them. Um, a lot of brokers supporting CTS. Um, I'm just kind of thinking who 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 does. Um, I know deep discount trading does. Um, you can get a list on uh, ctsfutures.com. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's probably the best source of it because really what we list is a bit in, you know it's incomplete. So Tom is saying you didn't need J5 if that setting is no. Right. No, that's true, Tom. And, and the reason, but still, if I take it out and then I were to run a back test, you would, and the, you know, if you look at the trade service log, you would, you would see the log fill up with a lot of messages saying like, uh, you know, ind indicating that the entries are, entry signals are being ignored. Okay. I hope I hope the webinar was informative. The feedback seems seems pretty good. So thanks, Anthony. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, so, if anybody has any additional questions for Anthony, uh, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? Well, with automated trading, uh, if they could go to um, select the help menu in Sierra Chart and select support board, and just make a posting on our support board, and um, we'll put together. Uh, uh, I'm going to put together this this file I, I have here. I'll, I'll just actually upload it to the board, I'll just so in, in, so people have it. Maybe I'll put a link to, the, to your video to your your recording if you can send me the recording, Mike. Sure, and I'll be posting the recording uh, sometime tomorrow, and uh, you'll be able to get to that. Anybody can get to that on Big My Trading. Just click webinars at the top of any page, but I'll send it to Anthony as well. All right, yeah, guys. So I'll post. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So if anybody has any uh, extra questions for Anthony, it's uh, sierrachart.com. And uh, for those guys waiting for the recording, I'll post it tomorrow. If anybody has questions for Brian at CTS, that's ctsfutures.com. There's also a thread on BMT, uh, which you can get to on the, uh, the forum homepage right now, where it says upcoming events. It's listed right there, and we can get some questions answered there as well. All right, guys, well, I want to thank Brian for uh, his introduction today from CTS Futures, and I want to thank Anthony for the, the detailed overview on uh, automation with uh, spreadsheets and backtesting in CR chart. And thanks, uh, all, all guys, for being here today, and I'll see everybody on the forum. Okay, thank you.